Our next example on a projectile motion problem is still landing on a slope. In this case, the slope is a 30 degree slope, and you'll see how that complicates things just a little bit. But again, uh, we're going to start off with our general principle. We're going to find time in the air. Of course, here's an object that is moving at 20 meters per second, gets to an incline that slopes downward 30 degrees. It's going to go airborne, eventually hit the slope somewhere further down the line. How far away from the starting point along the slope will it land? And so we're going to find time in the air. So time in the air can be found using the equation y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared. If I consider this to be y equals zero height, you can see that y will be negative as it goes down the slope. Uh, we have, uh, so initial height will be zero. The initial velocity in the y direction will be zero, and so it will land, so y is equal to minus 4.9 t squared, g of course being a minus 4.9, giving us an, a negative y on the way down. Now since I don't know what y is, because we don't know how far down the incline it will land, and I don't know what t is, we can't solve for t in this equation, so we need a second equation. We'll use time in the air in the x direction, and that of course is x is equal to v initial in the x direction times time, v initial in the x direction is 20, so we have x is equal to 20 times t. Now, normally I would say, well, x equals t, and set the two equations equal to each other, but we can't do that here because x is not equal to y here. Notice that uh, the y is smaller than the x because of the slope, so we have to find a relationship between x and y. The relationship can be found via the slope. So remember the equation y equals mx plus b. And so if you look at this triangle and we put that on a coordinate system like so, we call this the y, we call this the x, of course this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis, but this is the triangle right here that we have over there. Uh, what is the equation then? Of course, b will be zero since the line goes right through the origin, origin so we have y is equal to mx. So we need to find the slope, and the slope by definition, uh, m, is of course equal to the change in the y over the change in the x, and so that would be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So what is the change in y and what's the change in x? Well, let's see here. Uh, we have an angle here, which is 30 degrees. We have the opposite side, we have the adjacent side. If we assume the hypotenuse to be 1, we can then find the relation between x and y. So uh, in our triangle, if we call this uh, equal to 1, and we know that this angle is 30 degrees, then we can say that um, x will be the cosine of 30 degrees, which is 0.866, so this will be 0.866, and on the opposite side, that would be equal to 0.5. So now we have a relationship between x and y. We can find the slope that way. So the change in y would be 0.5. The change in x would be 0.866. And that becomes the slope of our equation. So now we have y is equal to the ratio of 0.5 over 0.866 times x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this y by this quantity right here. So we'll go ahead and take that and plug it in here. So now we have 0.5 over 0.866x is equal to minus 4.9t squared. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by the 0.866 and divide both sides by 0.5. I end up with x is equal to minus 4.9 times 0.866 over 0.5 times t squared. So now I have this equation right here and I have this equation and now I can set them equal to each other. So we had this one complication that x wasn't equal to y. We had to find the relationship between x and y, then plug that into one of my equations, solve for x, and now I can set them equal to each other. All right, so now I can say that, and I'm going to simplify this a little bit. So let's see, that's uh, divided by 0 0.5 times 4.9 equals. So this becomes 8.49. So we have uh, x is equal to minus 8.49t squared, and I have x is equal to 20t. Set those equal to each other. So we have 20t is equal to minus 8.49t squared. Now one more uh, thing here. 
Y is going to be, of course, a negative quantity. I want, to find the, I want to find the absolute value of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's make that an absolute value. So I negate the negative of going below the Y equals 0 point. If I do that, I can find the absolute value of this right here and set them equal to each other as 20T is equal to 8.49T squared. Now I can go ahead and solve that for T by moving one to the other side. So 0 is equal to 8.49T squared minus 20T. Factor out a T, so 0 is equal to T times 8.49T minus 20, which means T is equal to 0 or t is equal to, when I solve, set that equal to 0. So what that means is I'm going to add, end up with 8.49t minus 20 equal to 0, or 8.49t equals to 20, or t equals 20 divided by 8.49. So 20 divided by 8.49 equals 2.36, 2.36 seconds. OK, now I've found along that object will be in the air. So now I can go ahead and find the x distance. I can find the y distance. In this case, let me find the x distance. So x is equal to 20 times 2.36 seconds, which is equal to 47.1 meters, 47.1 meters. So now that I found x and I have the angle, I can find d because using trigonometric Identities, I can say that the hypotenuse d, or actually I can say that x is equal to d times the cosine of theta, or I can say that d is equal to x divided by the cosine of theta. x we found to be 47.1 meters, and I divide that by cosine of 30 degrees, and that gives me the distance along the slope. So divide that by 30, take the cosine of that equals, 54.4 meters, and that's the ultimate answer. Wow, you may say, that was quite a problem, and yes, in a way it is, but let's review it, and it won't look so bad the second time around. So again, the problem was, an object coming along at 20 meters per second, hitting a slope region 30 degrees below the horizontal, it's going to go airborne, eventually hit the slope down here. Where will it land? Well, we want time in the air, but since there's two unknowns here, you will not be able to solve it like this. So you have to use the x equation as well to find time in the air. So you have time in terms of x. You have time in terms of y. So now you have to find the relationship between y and x. Since it's a slope line, we can find that by using the equation y equals mx plus b, or simply find the slope. Once we have find the slope, we can now relate x and y together. So now we can set the two equations equal to each other, which we did over here. We get rid of the negative sign. Imagining, of course, that y is in a negative direction, which negates that sign. So we take the absolute value of that, set equal to each other, solve for time. We get the time in the air now. We find the distance traveled in the x direction. Uh, where was that? Right over here. Then we find the distance traveled in the d direction or along the slope. And that's the answer.